famous narration as well that uh, Abu Musa al-Ash'ari uh, was uh, with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he followed him uh, and the Prophet sallallahu went into the garden of one of the Ansar whom he knew that the Ansari would not mind him coming in. It was a public garden. So he walked in and he sat down in contemplation. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari said, I will volunteer to be the the doorman of the Prophet the guard of the Prophet I don't want anybody to disturb him when he's in his ibadah. So he went outside and he stood outside of the garden. So when he went outside, Abu Bakr came, where is the Prophet He's inside. Can I go inside? Let me ask him. He went inside, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Bakr is at the door. Can he come in? Yes, tell him to come in and tell him that he shall enter Jannah. Okay, Alhamdulillah. Umar, the same thing. Uthman, the same thing, but then after a calamity that will befall him. بعد مصيبتن, after a musiba he will be tested with. Then he will enter Jannah. So the fitan began in the time of Uthman. And that's what Hudayfa said. Oh Umar, don't worry. You're not going to see the musiba that's going to be a community musiba. The assassination of Umar was a one-off. One deranged lunatic, one Majusi assassinated. It wasn't a conspiracy. There wasn't a mob. One crazy person went and killed our Khalifa Umar al-Khattab. As for Uthman radiallahu anhu, what happened? Mob mentality. Break, break up of the unity of the Ummah. That's why he said, بعد بلوى, after a calamity, a major issue that's going to affect him. And in the famous hadith in the Mustadak of Al-Hakim, our Prophet said to Uthman, that, O oh Uthman, Allah Azza wa Jal will give you a shirt to wear. And others will come wanting to snatch that shirt away from you. But do not give them that shirt until Allah Himself takes it away. Do we all understand what this means? This is a prediction. Now, did Uthman radiallahu understand this when it was said? Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. But he clearly understood it in his khilafah. When, and that's why I said cryptic wording. This is of the points of predictions of judgment. They are cryptic. What shirt? What is going on? Why is this shirt being mentioned? Maybe, maybe Uthman radiallahu himself did not understand what does the shirt mean. But definitely in the time of his khilafah, now he knows. And that is one of the reasons he did not budge. Because he knew if he gave them an inch, they would take a foot. If he gave them a foot, they would do much more than this. So he did not budge and he did the right thing and he died a shaheed. But the Prophet said, he's going to be tested. Balwa. Balwa means a, a calamity of a big nature. So the Sahaba understood in Uthman's time, the door will be opened. And that's when the, uh, the issues will take place. So this is the genre of predicting Abu Bakr, Umar and Uthman radiallahu anhum's uh, death. Another prediction is the prediction of the battle of the camel. And the battle of the camel was one of the most tragic battles. No, let me rephrase. It was the most tragic battle of early Islam, of the time of the Sahaba. There is no exception. It was the most heart-wrenching battle because, well, like, who can you, you cannot choose sides. How can you choose sides? And that's why when somebody, uh, uh, what is the battle of the Jamal? The battle of the Jamal, on one side you have Aisha and Talha and Zubair radiallahu anhum. On the other side you have Ali ibn Abi Talib and many of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. How do you choose sides here? The battle of the Jamal. And this is why when Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal was asked, what happened during that time? Which side should we have taken? Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal died 240 Hijrah, 200 years after the battle of the Camel. The battle of the Jamal. It's called the battle of the camel because Aisha radiallahu anha, she was on a camel that had a mini tent. You know, our mothers, they were not allowed to be seen at all. Unlike other ladies, they can be seen in hijab. Our mothers, the wives of the Prophet they cannot even be seen in hijab. They have to be in a mini tent. No one can even see the outer shape of our mother. This is a special commandment only for them. And so when they were, uh, when she was on the camel, she was in something called a haudaj. And the haudaj is the uh, mini tent on the camel. And so everybody could see the camel bobbing up and down and in the middle. And so they called it, and, and usually you don't see a woman's tent in the middle of the battlefield, right? So that's why it's called the battle of the camel. Because in that battle, there was a camel with the Aisha radiallahu anha's tent on it. And uh, Imam Ahmed was asked about that battle. And he said, that was a battle Allah saved our swords from having to have blood 
so why don't we save our tongues from having to have sides? That was a battle. Alhamdulillah, we didn't have to pick our swords. We weren't alive back then. I wasn't forced to choose sides. So then why are you dragging my tongue in and making me force and pick sides now? Let me be quiet. And this, by the way, is pure Sunni theology. We stay quiet about what happened between the Sahaba and we don't discuss it in a lot of detail. We don't bring up he said, she said. We don't let it be. Tilka ummatun qad khalat. Radiyallahu anhum wa an. And some other groups, they love to discuss this and that and this and that. And what happens? The heart becomes hard and no benefit happens. There were people who were righteous. They had a misunderstanding. And what happened, happened and life goes on. We don't dwell on the past. So Imam Ahmad said, I don't want to talk about it. My tongue will remain silent about it. But our Prophet predicted the battle of the Jamal. Hadith is in Musadraqim of Al Hakim, and it is a Hassan hadith. And in fact, there are three other hadith Tabarani, others, so it's an authentic hadith. That, and why this hadith is so bizarre. The first time I read it, I couldn't believe this is many years ago. I couldn't believe this is so explicit. I actually looked it up in the Mustad of Al Hakim to make sure that with the book I was reading didn't, you know, change some words or whatnot. I went to the original to look it up. So, uh, in this, uh, in the hadith, Aisha radiallahu anha and Ali radiallahu an are sitting in the same room as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Ali radiallahu an, O oh Ali, what will you do when there will be an issue between you and her? What will you do on that time when there's going to be some issue? So he said, Ya Rasulullah, me? Aisha, how? How? I will be the worst of the two, or the, not the better of the two. Means, no, nah, nah, that's not going to happen. I'm not going to do that. So the Prophet wasallam said that when it does happen, then return her from where she came from safely. Bring her back and take her where she came from safely. And that is why Ali radiallahu an, after the battle of the camel, he sent his own daughters and he sent the noble ladies of Medina as bodyguards. Women, he sent them. Meaning the internal bodyguard, then you have the external convoy, obviously. They have the internal, like nobody should interact with the women. He sent his own daughters and he sent the noble ladies of, I said Medina, Kufa, sorry. Kufa. He sent them from Kufa all the way back to Medina to return Aisha to Medina. And then he brought the ladies back and he left Aisha there. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, Perhaps a day will come when there will be something between you and her. When that day happens, then you, O Ali, radiallahu an, you take her back to her place safe and sound. And he did exactly as he was commanded, and he returned Aisha exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, told him to do. Are you tired of all these annoying ads on YouTube? Are you worried that a haram video might pop up? Well, the One Islam TV app is here to solve these problems, inshallah. The One Islam TV app is 100% free of any ads and is safe to browse for your peace of mind. Watch or listen to lectures and lessons while you work, rest or drive with your device switched off. Watch videos on demand or download videos and watch offline. Watch hundreds of high-quality produced Islamic reminders, Quran learning videos, stories of the prophets, and so much more. Two to four new videos uploaded daily, inshallah. One Islam TV is 100% run and owned by Muslims, which means a small amount you pay for your subscription is a sadaqa jariya, continuous charity for you as we use the funds raised to continue producing more beneficial videos and reminders. Insha'Allah. The One Islam TV app is now available on Apple devices, Apple TV, Android devices, Android TV, Amazon Fire TV, and Roku. So you can watch on most devices and smart TVs. Download now for a free 7-day trial. May Allah reward you for supporting our work.